Yo ho ho! What's going on, guys? This is Grim Reaper bringing you a, another One Punch Man review. Now, uh, you guys are here, it's because you've seen the succession of the chapter and the reaction. So, if you guys want to continue in the parade week, the, the golden week, however you want to call it, uh, chapter release week, um, check out the link in the description for our Patreon and our Discord where you can participate in the community and support the community as well. Um, this is a weird one, a very, very good one, spectacular art. And there was a lot of narrative points that were addressed, a lot of speculation that has to be made now. And let's see where the plot progresses where it takes us but um firstly let's address the greatness yo Sarochi's titties barely in the nipples down <laughs> but they were just sitting there just turked up this all like out oh, bruh yo and he like he actually drew the nipple bruh like <laughs> how you drew the nipple bruh you tripped the mood out there like that was like that was probably his gift Saying like, I'm sorry I took this on to release a chapter. You know, I was on that that BS playing around. Like it's, we're here now. We're back to it. It's fire and bro, ho, 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 ho. he brought fire. Now we start off the chapter with. Well, let me let me not, let me not even take it in that path. Let's just address the big points directly because we may end up talking longer than we need to. And I want to address some other points in a different video as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get into as much detail as possible without like going into like crazy speculation. But so first we get this huge uh, I don't know how to like properly or like appropriately describe it. Like is this like a god level attack? Like so this is the immediate question that sparked up. Check out the poll question as well on the YouTube community section to answer yourself. Is Sairochi, is this, is this a guide level attack? Sairochi versus Boros? Like, these are the things that are spewed into people's heads. Like, how. It's difficult because I just wasn't expecting something like this. And it's. To, 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 to get personal. I was seeing the escalation stay around Orochi's level because it was really, really weird to see Saitama beat Orochi mid arc. Personally, I covered that like anomalous, like story point with the fact that one is an amazing storyteller. He just all kinds of uh, like tropes and flips them on the side and the back, and he always flips it around. He's he's really, really good with like spontaneous different diverse however you want to like really describe it. it he's different with the storytelling it's not really predictable all the time so i don't necessarily I, I didn't necessarily have a strong opinion on like what was going to come of the fact that saitama beat orochi so fast because we should think it's a climax to the other obvious point was going to be goro that he was going to be the biggest obstacle there you know Sa psychos didn't really seem that strong like Especially because Goro was able to overwhelm her like puppet, but now we see the reality of it. There was a puppet. There was a lot of like signaling and checkpoints along the way to destroy her her psychic power. So we know why that why we why that was happening. Like that would contribute to like the whole distance thing. But besides that point, Goro was really the only only other villain that was like worth anything. But it seems like there's more now, and we didn't pay that much attention to it because like, or at least I didn't. It it came in like kind of like some sneak crazy lunatic-ish gibberish from homeless emperor when he first described the appearance of this being that seems to be actually apparent and influencing like the sequence of, of events so we may be talking about him being the final villain but you, you, i didn't really take that much like heed into it or put that much like you know weight on that belief you know i think zonin mentioned something that was important or that the character was relevant or like he also played it kind of like low and aloof didn't give too much information or like he put that much importance to it that's why he was allowed at least in the podcast to go over like without being nitpicked but that first appearance like it was weird how like homeless described him it was like really like religious like and he had like a whole like 
backwards like political or maybe not even maybe I wouldn't call it political but like a whole backwards like viewpoint on like the environment like the world and like it makes you think especially with the narrative that psychos was talking about how she was describing like the communication or the thoughts that came into her head um whenever she was actually like uh uh, uh, uh interacting with uh with a god character or whatever it makes me think that he's tailoring these illusions or like these powers to them in particular because the whole environmental thing like saving the planet is like for you know what you call it is to remove humanity from it like the whole thing the homeless is pu uh, 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 pushing like a whole extremist thing and he, we're now talking on a planetary scale as well so it makes me think that we may be talking about planet like planets like this god entity may be wanting to take control over the planet and from the information that we have so far i think we can decipher that to be like conclusive like he wants to take over the planet or destroy the planet and he has immense power i guess he can become a planet i don't, I don't know like the dialogue that like i'm not taking exactly what psychos is saying as just her own words i'm somewhat conflating it with not only this god character's like goals his goals but maybe his own words like maybe he's actually speaking or like maybe conveying his true intent decisively that's how uh, one's trying to like deliver it to us decisively through psychos's words and through psychos intentions because i'm expecting that home like they, like they told us like homeless emperor showed up into the situation without really being like relevant he wasn't like a monster beforehand he got his powers a few days ago or a few weeks ago whatever so he's new to the entire setup and scene he's just a homeless guy so he he most likely had like ambitions outside of it that's why like in his like uh, a declaration of what his intentions were or, like his backstory or whatever it involved the environment to that extent but that's what i'm, I'm talking about like there's a correlation between planets and homeless talking about the planets how uh, psychos is doing it so that's why i'm conflating or that's why i'm 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 reaching to the to the ideal reaching out i'm gonna call it reaching i can't prove it for now that he he wants something he has something to do with planets like it's the entire planet that he's gonna do he's probably going after another one he's probably been doing that he's probably another like celestial threat like boros was this is probably the thing that's actually boros to answer to answer the question that we've all been like thinking about and I'm probably going to ask in the next video or in one of the next two videos is Psychos or Sairochi a god level threat right now? I don't believe so. I don't believe that Boros either. The other question. I don't believe that Boros would lose. But we're going to do a poll video, I believe, tomorrow for the Patreon and weekly poll setup. Um, and I'll hear your responses on the Boros versus Sairochi conversation to see, to see what you guys think. But regardless of that fact, I want to make that, and I'll probably push that narrative in the podcast, see what the guys think. Is it fair to say that the dialogue from Homeless Emperor and the dialogue from Sairochi should have hints as to, like, this God character, his true intentions? Like, maybe, like, am I wrong to think that, like, the dialogue that they're talking about, like, may be God's dialogue? Like, exactly? Like, I don't know. Because the visions that they're seeing and how they receive their powers were also very different. It was like this like dust cloud of like leaves and wind that actually approached homeless in a humanoid form. But this is a huge planetoid form. And the image that we see for um for Roti and Psychos when they're refusing and having their power struggle, it's as if they were like disembodied and like put into some different illusionist world. And that great picture that we first see the actual planetoid or planet like thing it seems as if like the shining portion that's in front of it that's confronting um this planet thing is where psychos and rotsi are it's a little shining light and behind them you can see a background that seems like it's the sky and the planets and you know it's outer space so you can tell that they're they're definitely being shown something that's different because we saw the entire unification process and that they did stay there physically like tatsumaki was there we saw the attack process we saw the unification process we saw all that happen so I don't think they were teleported to actually out of outer space here. This is something that's happening inside of her mind. She was shown, and it's it's kind of badass to think that like he was able to influence a situation like in between a fight like that. 
this means that he's been watching or he's been walking along or he's been amongst situation even actively now which is kind of creepy you would think that like maybe like one or like murata would have like given some hint of like his presence in like one of the back panels or like maybe like left like some disturbance or debris indicating that like he walks that way maybe maybe we'll see something like that whenever we get this character actually presented like if there's like some tendency or like some effect that happens whenever he's around maybe we saw that maybe we saw some of maybe that big ass cavern that rover was fighting um the new fubuki group in wasn't made by his explosions but was made by god somehow uh, I, I don't know but like it's creepy that he's been around and we haven't really had a chance to see him or like have had strong hints of his influence and it's not to say that like it's sloppy like or it's there's not foreshadowing for it it's like it's it's purposeful and there there is no like hint of like slack or or, or like bad storytelling in it it's like we're still waiting to see the rest of the hints the rest of the clues and how one's waiting uh how one's gonna put this together and i for one i'm excited to see how it's gonna how it's gonna turn out but just seeing that thing bro that was pretty scary bro like the whole how it presented it was beautiful the background was beautiful but like it's like the whole circular thing was kind of like weird like that whole uh what is that condition where like if you like when you see like a bunch of little holes in succession or like in the certain thing you're like it makes you weird I, I i don't know it was it was weird to look at like it's but regards to that i don't think it's fair to say i don't think it's fair of me to attribute sirochi's power to god And I, I'm saying that in terms of like, the question is, if this this being didn't interfere inside of their fusion, how strong would Sairoti and in, in Psychos be? Like, because that's that's clearly what they're saying here, that in the moment of fusion, they were interfered with and they were shown and manipulated and given even more power. She didn't voluntarily ask for it. They didn't negotiate for it. Like, they, it wasn't like that. It was like, this guy was passing by and then he bestowed this upon them. He affected them. He basically attacked them. So. <sighs> this is what I was saying in the beginning of the video. The scaling, I was looking at it differently because. From what we saw from Orochi and the hype of like. You know, in terms of like things that he was dealing with, things that he was doing, his portrayal, him showing off against Goro first, not full strength, and this him showing off against Saitama full strength. Like, we saw what the difference was, and that we were believing that Orochi was going to be one of the final villains, or at least an above dragon threat. That's what he was, and he's still in that category. But people were convincingly. I mean, let me not say convincingly. People were discussing pretty like aggressively that Tatsumaki could probably beat Orochi in the display that we saw up against Saitama. And even to this day, individuals may still claim that. But the case in fact is that we don't know how much stronger he was supposed to get. Because remember, Orochi was not only injured or beaten or recovering from the assault from Saitama, but now we're in a fusion with Psychos. So there is no, there is no like clear way to put them together. Like we can't say that Prime Orochi when he fought Saitama is the one that's fusing with Psychos, because it seems like there's obviously a, a, a loss of power here. He's not able to muster the same amount of strength or even clump her together as he was before. He was trying to gather up a bunch of be a bunch of beings and monsters along the way. So it's obvious that he wasn't at the same power level. And the Psychos had gone through quite a bit of like damage. It wasn't too crazy, but like she was definitely putting in work. So like, but it still wasn't even enough to like truly challenge like Tatsumaki. Like it really wasn't. To an extent, a little bit, a little bit. He's up there. He's definitely a high dragon. But like, so the question is, how strong would have like Sairochi and Orochi have been without God's interference? If we can figure those variables out, then we know how much like, how much power like God really gave her because we saw what it did with Homeless. Or, yeah, like, almost a regular guy and they turn into a dragon. If you're a being who can give out powers to turn things into a dragon, like, it's pretty strong. What happens when you turn, like, a being that was already above dragon 
and then a high dragon with that, and you give him a plus. Unless I'm interpreting that wrong, that's what the translation was reading that like God interfered in that in that little patch this time. So that's that's really the the, the point of contention here. Like, is there a misinterpretation going on here? Like, am I wrong to think that like God gave Cyrochi not Psychos or Orochi power? Like, did he give power to Psycho? Did he give power to Psychos? And then in the fusion, is this gonna be stronger because of that? Is that why Psychos is able to like seriously, competently take control over Orochi? Because in the panel that we saw here, which is probably the more accurate in terms of like telling us exactly when it happened, they were still struggling. She's still saying, like, I'm the one in control, I'm I'm the master, or whatever. So they were still struggling. So could it have been God's power? Like he chose to back Psychos in the great fight for this being here. And cycles to control. If that's the case, if something were to happen to Sairochi, would she be able to lose? Would like would she lose God's power? Like, because I'm still expecting Orochi to take control. Like, that's still a point in the story. Orochi said he wanted revenge up against Saitama. Whether he's gonna like react while he's fused with with um with Sairochi or with Psychos and then fight Saitama like that in the Sairochi form, sure, that could definitely like take make up for it. But the whole point was that. He is consciousness is the one that wants to fight. And because Psychos is the one to control, he would necessarily be satisfied, or I don't think they would necessarily be satisfactory to have Psychos fight Saitama and not Orochi himself. Let's see. Let's see. All I know is that Tatsumaki tanked this Delta Beam thing that happened to uh, basically cut the crust of the earth the top part and then like just pop back down that was really hard to like really think about like i guess it's like if you have like a little ice cream thing like you scoop it pull it back out and then it falls back down i guess it's like that or like i don't know like sand like you know when you're out there playing in the sandbox and you scoop it up and you, i don't know how you really describe it like maybe like some blocks and you pick a block up and put it back down that's basically what happened like he, she cut the crust there was so much water there and it came back down and the massive water just fell and then <coughs> it should be tremendous tsunamis like if it's not a, like a global catastrophic event that i'm not really sure that it was like accurate and people were talking about the presence of the of um metal knight blast in particular i'm not adding metal knight but blast in particular's reaction to this catastrophic event or the, the strength of these attacks and the occurrences that are going on here and hopefully we'll see something like that but he didn't show up for Boros. And like I'm I'm claiming Boros is probably still more of a threat for now. So <sighs> let's see man. There's a lot more to talk about. And like I said, I'll be doing some um, other videos uh, throughout the week. Um I believe I'll be filming the podcast either tomorrow or the night after that. And then uh, if you're a patron, you'll be able you'll be able to receive the uncut um uh unedited release of the one punch man podcast the day of releasing so like we'll record it and then like 30 minutes later i'll like i'll beat my meter something like that and then i'll you know drop it <laughs> so you guys will get it like that um but if not you'll get it after like a whole day i, I think um i used to take like a whole day to edit it so get it that night around like 9 or 10 or 8 p.m eastern time usually um for now like this video like this video um you guys came through and heavy for the release of one through two in the live reaction I know you guys really love the live reactions um i really appreciate it we got like 100 likes uh really 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 helps we're having issues with like uh i'm not sure if it's like censorship or what's going on with like the subscriber count but once we get back into the flow and the rhythm and this chapter release really helped we'll be storm we'll be flowing right back up and we'll get to that 2k by the end of the year um so with that being said like the video guys subscribe uh check out the patreon check out the discord and we'll see y'all boys uh in a few days Yo-ho!